everybody, right? Yeah. yeah. Sir. Your impressions of Iowa and what they've kind of done here recently. Right. Up a lot of points. Yeah, they've uh, well, they've always you know been a team that can score a lot of points. Like no matter who's on their roster, like they really put you in binds. The way they can attack you in transition with all the skill, um, they'll show a couple different looks. They're not going sm uh, as small as they've been in the past, just because I think Rebracco has been such a good player for them. And uh, but they, they they still will at some time. Just how much. You know, will they do that? But Chris Murray's a very good player, really stretches things out. Um, then their guards, you know, Perkins has 32 in the last game. Uh, Aaron Euless had 17 at Michigan State. And so, like, they, they have a handful of guys. Sanford's won a couple games for him with his ability to shoot the basketball. He can get hot and change a game. Um, I know I'm missing, you know, some people there, but uh, both McCaffrey's, you know, have, have played, have experience. Um, Patrick played really well here last year. It was the last year before um, against us. You know, Connor once again has a great assist turnover ratio, knocking down threes. Um, just give him that kind of veteran leadership. So they have a, they have good pieces. They have a, they have a good team, and uh, you got to be ready to score the basketball. You know, because you know they are, um, and that's our goal. Our, our goal is to slow them down. I don't know if you can ultimately stop them. You know, you got to be able to slow them down. And not let them steal points. You can't let them have wide open threes. You can't let them just live at the free throw line. Because they do, they get to the free throw line a lot. They really drive the basketball. And they're the aggressive. And, and that's what we want to be able to do is, is get our defense set, not let them have those open ones, and uh, make them score overs, make them, you know, at least make contested shots. And how important is it to handle their press? And what they're going to throw at you on Thursday? Right, yeah, you know, sure. If they, um, you know, they zone press you and they really extend that. And normally they'll, they'll go to it, and if you show weakness, they'll stay with it and be more aggressive. Um, if you break it, especially if you score off of it, they'll they normally just get out of it. So um, I think it's going to be important for us to be able to, when there's opportunities, try to be aggressive ourselves. Um, when there's not, then you got to run good offense. With Rebracho played, I think, 39 minutes last game, mm -hmm. and he's pretty much their only traditional big that they play a bunch right. of. How do you handle if a team goes small against you? Yeah. Well, offensively, you know, it, it's uh, nothing really different, even though they're not going to have somebody physically that can guard him. So they're normally swarm him and have two to three people around him. Um, it's at the other end who you match with. I mean, it just depends on the lineup that they have. We've always matched. Um, we obviously aren't going to match Zach with Chris Murray. He's the biggest guy on the floor. So we just, we just match accordingly, and we normally just put him on the guy that we feel um, is less likely to hurt us, but there's still a downside to it. Just like there's an upside at the end of the other, other end of the court. It's like playing cards, you know, you gotta flip it and you're, you know. Is that a feel thing or do you have an idea? It, well, the feel is who they play. I can't, I can't sub play people in for it. You know, it's who he has in, in the game at that time. And then we just try to take the guy that we feel. Sometimes it's not as much a skill, it's about movement too. So you get someone that maybe is not a great outside shooter, you put him on it, but if he's fast and he's quick, you know, and now we're going to get around, and now we're in help. That's, you know, we're, we're kind of feeding into it. I don't think there's a uh, end-all, be-all in that situation. I think there's a downside for us, but I think there's a huge upside at the other end of the court. Can you talk about the importance of the student section and just their scouting reports to, to know the opponents and the advantage of, you know, them kind of understanding the game um, from a different Talk perspective? Talking about our, our yeah, student section? Yeah, the paint crew. Yeah, it's, I think it's kind of cool as they, you know, each student section kind of does it, and they kind of get everybody organized with things, as long as it's constructive, and you know you know about the opponent, you know things about the opponent, but you're not doing you know crazy stuff, you know with chance or you know whatever it might be. But the, the support that they've done, our our students have been great. They've been great in that area. So I think that's the that's sometimes the downside with it. They, as they're educating, they're educating about the wrong things. I think our student <laughs> section has done the education about the right things, even though we've had our moments. Do you think this team this year has done a good job staying on edge, like as you like to talk to? You? Yeah, I, I think so. You know, I think that's a that's a tough one through wins. You know, you know, you you win and you you know you start to you know things start to slip. A little bit. And as a coach, that's your job to try to not let it slip, even though organically it does. Um, but no, I, I think they've done a good job of just kind of you know jumping back into the next opponent and understanding um, you know what we have to do, like. What happened down in Indiana was something that, you know, as a coaching staff, like you knew it was coming. You know, can we handle it? 
and obviously we didn't do a very good job in the first half. So, but you know, we belabored the point, and it just so it wasn't something that they weren't knowledgeable about. But you still have to go through some things sometimes, and um, you know now being able to get on edge and move to the next game, you know you shouldn't really have to be on edge after a loss, right? You, you move on, you know you got that sick feeling in your stomach, and hopefully you can do something about it. You know, Izzo, Izzo said that you're the best coach at getting players to buy into their roles. Yeah. Without getting too deep in the weeds here, but when does that process start for you? Yeah. Is that an off-season thing? Is that no. when practice starts? I mean, no, how do you? Because you, <coughs> you have to allow people to play and earn their place too. Because I'm not deciding, they're deciding. And so if you don't let them do that, um, one of the things with me is like, you know, are you listening? Like, are you are you listening? It's like, you know, they want my trust and I want theirs but I don't play, so I, I'm really out of the equation. You know, even though they think I'm in the equation, I'm not. So everybody in that locker room can play basketball, and they wouldn't be there. But now who can you trust? And you earn that trust. Like, do you follow what you, you know, like what we're talking about, do you say? And so when you get June, July, August, September, October, like, are we, like we're a year-round deal. Like a lot of people do workouts and different things in the summer. I don't, I practice. Right. Because I want them to be able to take what I'm giving them, and now can they do it? And now when they can't, now can they grow and learn from that and then end up being able to do it? If you can't, you're going to have a tough time playing. Um, so it's not all about what, what a fan normally sees as physical ability and that's it. There's so much more to it. You know, your understanding of the game, you're able to take things in. Um, just, you know, doing your job. I know it sounds simple. You know, you, you hear it a lot in football, like with guys that do their job, because football is very detailed um, in what they do. They run a lot of stuff. They have a lot of different packages. Like, you, you know, you have to be on your P's and Q's. Like, you have audibles. You have a lot of different things that you have to be able to read and know what's going on with some last second changes. When basketball, not quite as much, even though things can happen. We're more of a workout society where 30 years ago in basketball, guys played. So they understood things more. They understood angles more. They understood, you know, how to play, how to read things. Now we weren't as skilled as the as these guys are today, and we weren't in, in shape as well as these guys. We weren't as quick. We weren't as strong. Those things are starting to improve. But the other pieces, you got to find guys that know how to play before they get here. Like, well, you can help them. You can coach them to a degree. You can to a degree. But if they walk through that door, like a Fletcher lawyer walks through that door, he knows how to play. Like he knows what's going on. Does he still need to learn some things? Yeah, but through competition, he will. You learn some hard lessons, and you, you keep getting better. But if you come through those doors, and I'm saying the same thing to you when you're 19 as I'm saying when you're 22, boy, that doesn't bode well. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't. And, and so, like, they're even though you've offered them a scholarship, they're here. They're auditioning at all times. They don't realize they're auditioning, but they're, you know, and, and that's what I, I start with the shot selection right away. That's what I start with. Like, I quickly let them know, like, hey, that's a good shot, that's a bad shot, you know, make or miss. And uh, I think that's an important piece to really, really harp on those things. But I'm also waiting for them to show me what they can and can't do. And so when they start to show me, especially what they can't do, you know, we try to put those things in the attic and get away from those things and just magnify what they're good at. So. It, it, it sounds simple, but just the communication part of letting players know kind of where they stand. Right. Is that something that you do a lot, oh, yeah, or yeah. is it just? Oh, yeah, I do every day. <laughs> I do every day. But just open, like you know, you, you don't always want it. You telling them, right? You know, you want you know, open dialogue to where they know, like they work on things, but it's got to serve as a team strength. You know, like you know, hey, I'm getting better at this. Well, is is it something that we should do, not something that you want to do? Like that, that there, there lies the difference. You know, it's got to be a team strength. Kind of going off that, Ethan Morton came in here, a great passer, score in high school. How soon did you kind of say, you need to learn to love defense? That's you know that's where you help us the best. Yeah. Well, they all should play defense. Right. Well, he played, I mean, he, he's matched up against the best guy yeah. every night. So. Yeah, well, he's found his way in that area. Just He's got good size. Um, he has a good feel about things. He knows what's going on. Uh, you, you quickly, Rayfield Davis was that way. Rayfield Davis was not a good defender before. Um, you, you figure it out, or, you, or somebody else figures it out, and you watch them, right? 
Like that, that's, I mean, that's real simple because I'm not, I didn't promise anybody. I didn't promise Zach Eady anything. I didn't promise Mason anything. I, didn't, I don't promise guys anything. So when they get it, that's cool. Somebody else can come get it then too. Like it's not, and it's not always about starting. Like it's not always about, you know, those things, even though everybody wants to. You know, it's about winning. It's about collectively doing things. But if you're the best on your team in something, you know they're going to find your minutes. And he's become the best defender, so he's, he's found those minutes. Uh, 